Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be talking about line art. I know that line art is something that some people really struggle with and as a result they don't enjoy that part of the drawing process. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination but I have been doing digital art for quite a long time so I hope that some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way can help you to improve your techniques a little bit and maybe enjoy the line art process a bit more. Okay, so for this I'm going to be using Paint Tool Sci, which is my preferred software, but most of what I'm saying will be applicable to pretty much any software that you like to use. So first off, the most important thing is to make sure that your image resolution is correct. So when I'm doing a sketch, I don't really pay a lot of attention to what size I'm sketching on, which I probably should pay more attention to because the other day I accidentally drew something on a 400 pixel wide canvas and then I regretted my entire life. So once we've done with the sketch, then we want to make sure that our canvas is the final size that the image is going to be. Because if you resize after your line art is done, then it's going to not look good at all, trust me. You can change the size of your image by going up to change resolution in Sci. You don't want the change size because that will actually expand your canvas out from the middle and not make the image itself any bigger. But if you go on to change resolution, then you can use whatever units you need to work out the size of your page here. So in my case, I did it by pixels. And then if you need a particular size, you can just Google whatever you need. So in this case, I'm making A4 because I don't know yet whether it's going to be an A5 or an A4 print. So to be on the safe side, I'm just going to stick with A4 for now. So I'm going to show you this at full size. So this is the 100% size. Sorry if you can hear my mouse clicking very loudly. I've got my microphone right above it because there's nowhere else for it to go right now. So that is the full size that I've got the image on at the moment. Now I tend to sketch in colour because I find it easier on the eyes. It's recommended that you do your sketches on a background that isn't white, just so it's, it's less harsh on your eyes. And also when you're adding colour, sometimes a bright white background can affect the way that you're perceiving colours. So I've just got kind of used to doing my sketches in colour on a colour background. So that's why mine is very pink and yellow here. It looks like a sweet shot. So now I'm gonna move all my sketches into one folder all together. And then what I'm gonna do is reduce the opacity which you can see on the side just here. We now can take this down to whatever level we're comfortable at. And I would recommend putting this quite low. I tend to put mine around the 30% mark because otherwise if you have it too high, it's gonna be hard to differentiate between line art and sketch and you're gonna to need to keep turning the layers on and off and that will distract you and break you from your drawing flow and you don't wanna to get too distracted once you've got into the swing of things. So we've got this all into one group for ease of organization. So we're gonna, whoops, we are gonna reduce this right down and reduce this as well because it's doing my eyes in. So the next part of the process is optional, but it's something that does really help out a lot of artists. So it's worth taking a look and seeing if it works for you. And that is the stabilizer tool. So you'll find that along the top just here in Sci. It is in the same place in pretty much most software. Photoshop does not have a stabilizer as far as I'm aware. My version of Photoshop doesn't have it because it is a photo editing software and not a dedicated digital art software. But I believe that uh, Sai, Medibang, Manga Studio or Clip Studio Paint as it's now known and Fire Alpaca all have stabilizer tools of some kind. So if you only have Photoshop and you wanted to try a software with a stabilizer and you don't necessarily have the budget for Sai or any of the others, Medibang is completely free. I'm going to show you that just now. So this is Medibang, pretty much the same layout as Sai, just in a different colour and it's got the correction tool just along here, which is the same as the stabilizer. So the stabilizer basically, as the name suggests, stabilizes your lines. It's kind of hard to explain. It's something that you really have to try to fully understand how it works. So on the stabilizer on Sci, the numbers run from 1 to 15 and then S1 to S7. 0 to 15 seem to be more subtle and then the S numbers are slightly more noticeable in their effects. So personally, I use S1. So I'm going to show you, if I can get this guy out of the way, the difference between the two. So I'm drawing a line here without any stabilizer. And then I'm going to use my normal S1. And you can kind of see, if you look at the end of the lines here and here, it tapers more with S1. And if I do this, it comes out more slowly. So it is kind of hard to explain. It does take a little while to get the hang of. And I don't think there's anything I can really say that will get you 
comfortable with using the stabiliser immediately, it's just something you have to learn to work with, or you might prefer to not use a stabiliser at all, it's completely up to you. Personally, I have a tremor in my hand which does make it a little bit difficult, some days it's okay and some days it's really bad, and so my lines can be extremely wobbly sometimes when I'm drawing curves. So that's part of the reason why my art style is so jagged and linear is because I just, partly because I like the look but partly because I struggle drawing curved lines. And so the stabiliser does help me out when I'm drawing long sweeping lines. So it's up to you whether you want to use it or not and it is worth just trying out every setting. So it will be a little time consuming to figure it out and what's best for you but I recommend it if you are struggling with smooth lines. So the tool that I'm going to be using for this today is the default ink pen in Paint Tool Sci, both because it's my favourite tool to use but also it will be the easiest for you to follow along with because it's on completely default settings. So it's on 100% opacity or density with the simple circle and no texture settings and I've got it set so the pressure sensitivity affects the size but not the density. So what that means is when I'm drawing a line I'm pressing very lightly and I get a thin line press more heavily and I get a thicker line and it tapers depending on the weight I'm putting on the line. But if I affect the density as well, what that means is that as I press lighter it will fade and get paler. So you can see it's almost invisible there where I was barely touching the tablet. And that is a nice look and you might prefer it more, but personally I like all of my line art to have the same opacity, at least on the first pass. Also when you're adding flat colours to your line art after it's done, you will sometimes have trouble with the selection tool if your lines are paler in some parts than others because it won't understand where the edge is. Go away. So yeah, that's just uh, again another personal preference and I find it easier in the long run to have the lines all be the same colour and the same opacity as I go. If you didn't do your sketch in colour, by the way, you can put an overlay layer over top of your sketch with a colour and then lower the opacity depending on whatever's easiest for you to see. So that is also an option if you just want your sketch to stand out from the line art. So I am going to now zoom in pretty close and I'm going to start my lines. I'm using a dark reddish brown for this just because it's easiest on my eyes. You can change the colour of your line art later and I will get to that when we're done with this part. So I'm going to move the picture to an angle that's easiest for me to work with. On the left hand side just above the pen window there is a little icon that will allow you to just rotate your canvas really easily which is another thing I really like about Sai is that it's so easy to flip your image and rotate it which is invaluable because this is my natural drawing arch because I'm left handed and if I try and draw an arch going the other way it's never quite as good as I want so it's always handy to be able to turn the canvas to whatever angle is easiest for you to draw at. What I would recommend is not doing lots of little scratchy lines like this, which I know is tempting when you're not sure what you're doing, but you have to be bold and go straight in and do big bold lines. Just don't be scared because it's digital art and you've always got your control Z or control Z or whatever you want to call it depending on where you're from. So you've just got to go in and try and use as few lines as possible and sweep the lines and taper them. So if you have lines that are going like this and they're not quite meeting, I would recommend not trying to make them meet like that. If it's easier, allow them to intersect and then erase the overlap. I find that creates a more natural line than trying to force the two lines to meet. And then what I tend to do is just build up depth as I go. So probably the most important part of line art is line width and depth. So what that would do is create shadows and highlights almost within your line art. It makes the image pop because it's adding interest to the viewer, it's not just looking at a uniform line, it's allowing variation in it and adding a real sense of three-dimensional physicality to your line art. And so I think some artists tend to do just the basic line art and then add the depth later, but I tend to do it all in one. So as you can see as I go, I am just going over the parts that I feel need some extra oomph and just adding in that depth and dimension. Mm -hmm. 
obviously the depth within your lines will depend on where the shadows are falling in your image. So for example on this character the reflected light from the sky is going to be coming down on him which means that the lines underneath him are going to need to be more emphasised. But to a certain degree what I tend to do is follow the rules of real life and then I get up to a point where I decide is this still working or can I now stray off this into something that looks better and it's kind of instinctual you kind of learn it over time and it's a lot of it is about what impact your drawing will have on the viewer so I tend to add very deep shadows under characters necks and they might not necessarily be realistic but I just prefer how they look it's become kind of a, a trademark thing that I do and also another tip when I'm doing straight lines I don't want to use an actual tool to make this line straight because it's part of his jawline it's not gonna look robotically straight because he's not a robot uh, he, he's not perfect but I do want it to be fairly smooth so I'm actually just gonna do that and then erase the excess and that's when that kind of technique comes in really useful but this line is not quite where I wanted it and that's where the lasso tool comes in so along the left hand side just above the rotate tools we have a lasso we can circle around the part we want to move and just shift it like that and that's another thing that is invaluable because I like traditional art but I do find it extremely frustrating if I have just drawn something and I like it but it's just in the wrong place and I know that if I redraw it I'm not going to like it anymore, it's not going to be the same. I'm going to do this real time for a little bit but then I will fast forward so you don't have to watch my entire inking process in real time. Sometimes you can shape lines with the eraser so don't put yourself under too much pressure to get your lines perfect first time round because you can always go back in and just thin those lines back down with the eraser. It just takes a steady hand and practice and you can actually kind of smooth out your lines without the pressure of drawing that perfect line the first time round. So you'll see the difference between the way that I ink the face and the hair because I do the hair in a specific way. So I'm using smaller lines on the face but I'm taking care not to make them scratchy and make them like this for the outlines. And so when I want to use small lines like that I use those only for emphasis. So for example I will sometimes use them like this around the character's nose or eyes. It depends on the age of the character. Uh, when I draw Jacob he has a lot of lines around his eyes and this is just a, a sort of emphasis technique like I was talking about line weights to add a lot of depth and dimension before you've even put the colour on so it's up to you how much detail you want to put into your lines so it's just another thing you learn with experimentation but it's just I enjoy adding that variation into my line art as I go like a lot of aspects of art, digital line art is one of those things where no amount of advice is going to help you more than just sitting down and doing it. So you need to just learn by repetition, learn by doing, learn by practice. It's just one of those things you have to put the time in. And I'm going to actually pull up one of my old drawings here from the folder of shame. This is one of my first ever digital line art pieces from 2006 and as you can see the lines are extremely shaky. I think at this point I also had the pressure sensitivity off because I'm an idiot so yeah no pressure sensitivity, wobb wobbly lines and also I was using the fill tool and it was all on one layer and everything was terrible. So yeah this is me really struggling to get the hang of things. And then I'm going to show you one from a few months later. It's still an ugly drawing, but I don't know why I put copyrights on my drawings. Do not ask. I thought you had to, because I saw other people doing it. I thought, I must copyright them or people will steal them. Um, so, I don't know why anyone would want to steal this. But yeah, this is from a few months later. So, you can see it is considerably less wobbly. And that was just practice by doing. It's still not, it's not attractive line art, but it's better than it was. 
and then what I'm doing now, this is 11 years of practice. So obviously your learning process might not take quite as long as mine. I'm not the quickest learner in the world, but I get there in the end. But yeah, it's just about putting the time and the dedication in and you'll get there eventually because sometimes it is really hard to see your own progress when you're staring at your work for hours on end. But just uh, believe me, you are getting there with every drawing you do, there is some improvement. So yeah, it's just about the time and effort that you're willing to put in a lot of the time. Don't forget to utilise layers in your line art, so for example here I knew that the feather would be overlapping his headband, so for the sake of simplicity I've kept them on two separate layers, and then if I need to, for example, erase the headband I can do that without having any effect on the feather. And then while I'm on the subject of the feather, I can create depth and dimension in fabric materials and so on with line art as well. So for example with the feather I'm using a smaller brush size but I'm also just generally using the pen much more lightly than I do with my standard line art and that just allows me to create kind of a wispy effect but what I'm still doing is allowing the lines to taper off to their natural end rather than trying to sort of stop them halfway because that will create a sort of jarring effect with your line art, it won't look quite as natural, so just as long as you always try to keep your lines as sweeping as possible and then you can always fix any mistakes later. I would say that one of the key factors in getting smooth lines is the speed that you work at and I know that can seem daunting at first but it just takes practice. So for example I'll show you some kind of lines that I would be using for hair and if I'm doing hair I would normally be doing it like this but if I do that same line more slowly there is more of a judder in it I don't have as much control and that just comes with practice and from not being scared to do those sweeping lines because there is always an undo button you can always get rid of them if they don't turn out right and it just helps to get that nice smooth curve in your line art and I know it can be frustrating, especially if you are well practiced in traditional line art, suddenly you're swapping over to digital and it's like learning something completely new. But it just takes some persistence. It's good if you're feeling a bit shaky to start off a drawing session by just doing some lines like this, some cross hatches maybe, whatever you need to do to kind of get your drawing hand warmed up. So it's also useful to draw from your arm rather than just your wrist because drawing from the wrist can sometimes make your drawings and your lines a bit stiff. So practice drawing sweeping from your whole arm that will also hopefully reduce the risk of getting drawing injuries and so on from always having your hand in the same position. Now when you're inking hair the important thing to remember is to draw larger chunks and then break it down into smaller strands afterwards because when I was younger I used to draw hair like this so I would draw a strand then a strand then a strand and just keep going like that and then if it didn't look how I wanted I just kept adding more and more strands and thinking that might make it look better but it doesn't work like that so what I do now is I work in from the larger pieces so I will draw a large piece like this and then once I've done that and got the basis down 
I will then use a smaller pen and go in and draw in the individual strands. Not quite like that, there we go. <laughs> I'm going to flip that, that's easier. So this isn't as good as I would normally do it because I can't talk and draw very well at the same time, but hopefully you get the idea. So you see I'm drawing the larger structures and then breaking it down. So here's another strand and then work inwards from there and you will get the very clear outline of the way the hair is supposed to be falling without messy strands going in every direction. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit with drawing hair because it can be a bit daunting and always remember to just keep those fast sweeping lines going like that. So as long as you carry on like that you should be fine and just practice with different hair shapes as well practice with different styles, use jagged lines, use smooth lines and just try all different sorts. Draw from life and reference from photos and see if you can adapt that into a, a way that's easy and fun for you to draw. Okay, so here is my final line art. I'm going to zoom in to 100% on this side so you can see the full detail. And you can see as we go down towards his clothes here, they're not quite as neat as the lines on his face. So what I would say is, even though obviously you want to make your lines look good, don't stress too much over perfection. Mainly what I focus on is the face, because in most of my illustrations the focus is going to be the face, so that's what I need the viewer to look at mainly. And then towards the outer edges I'm not overly concerned about the lines. So don't strive for perfection. Remember the mantra, finished, not perfect. So don't work yourself up over your lines. Just as long as they get the message across of the illustration and you're pleased with them then don't spend hours and hours nitpicking and trying to fix tiny tiny little details that the viewer is never going to see because in the end the viewer doesn't see how long you spent on the illustration they just see the final piece so it's about how effective it is not how much time you spent picking out the little details 
I might change some parts of this when I get to the colour stage because sometimes when you throw colour on then the illustration starts to look different again and you might figure out that some things were not quite in the right place so it's interesting how much of a difference colour makes but for now this is what I've got there is one last thing I'm going to show you before I finish up this video and that is how you can change the colour of your lines so just along the right hand side here above the layers there is a little box called Preserve Opacity and it will have a similar name in other software and I think in Photoshop it has like a little box with like a checkerboard pattern in it uh, but it will say something similar along, along those lines but what that does is that locks your layer effectively so when you draw on it nothing is going to go outside those lines that you've already done so I'll show you just here, I'll get a nice bright colour and you can see there I can easily colour my lines without going over the edge. So what this does is allows you the opportunity to then fine tune your image towards the last stages. So obviously I can't show you here because he's not coloured but I'm going to get one of these work in progress things of Jacob from before I flatten down all the layers and I can show you on here. So I've got my line art layer here. Oops, I'm going to preserve the opacity on there and so for example if I wanted to soften the lines on his face I would get a colour that's like a darker shade of his skin tone maybe reduce the opacity of my brush and then go over the line art on his face and I can really soften down the look of the lines on his face and so you can do the same with the, the clothes and all different parts of the drawing and just fine tune it to your preference so however you think it looks good so that's a really good method when you've finished up your drawing and if you think your lines might look a bit too harsh that can be a really good effect for kind of softening things down and merging them all together. You can also see one last thing I nearly forgot. You can also see where I've added some extra details with a lower opacity brush just around his face where I've added these scars. That's always good for adding in details but for outlines that you're going to be filling sometimes your fill tool will have trouble with paler lines so just bear that in mind. So yeah that's pretty much everything I have to say about line art and I really hope it was useful to you. Do let me know if you have any questions and put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them and I'm really grateful for you stopping by to watch this video so thank you and I will see you next time. Bye!